Hello everyone and welcome to the first technical overview video of Black Square's Starship. This has been a multi-year passion project to simulate my favorite aircraft of all time. One so far ahead of its time that it paid the ultimate price. But luckily, there are still a few around today and I worked with their owners to preserve the legacy of Starship for the future. Let's take a look at the airframe of Starship. It's clearly a little unusual. This type of aircraft is called a tandem wing or canard aircraft. Although the very first powered fixed wing aircraft ever, the Wright Flyer, was technically a canard aircraft, the design wasn't popularized in the civilian market until the 1980s by designer Burt Rattan. The advantage of a canard aircraft is that the two wings work together to produce lift, instead of the horizontal tail fighting the lift produced by the main wing. Also, since the angle of incidence of the forward wing is slightly higher than that of the main wing, the forward wing will always stall before the main wing, pitching the aircraft down and avoiding a spin. The pusher-propeller configuration also allows the engines to be placed closer together, minimizing asymmetric thrust if an engine fails. It also makes for a cabin so quiet that you can hear the Hobbs meter ticking off the hours in flight. As an added bonus, hot exhaust air from the engines is directed at the metal propellers, so no propeller de-icing equipment is needed. While the aircraft might look a little strange with no tail, yaw stability is provided by the ventral fin and what are called tip sails with rudders on each wing. Starship was the first business aircraft with an all-composite airframe, including the wings, which gives them a very distinctive flex on the ground and in the air. Starship also has a control mixer and elevons, meaning that pitch control is achieved through deflection of the forward wing elevators and both would-be ailerons, just like the Space Shuttle or Concorde. At first glance, a lot of people miss possibly the most impressive feature of Starship. That forward wing is actually articulated to create a variable geometry surface. The normally swept back forward wing extends to a forward sweep angle whenever the single stage flaps are deployed. An electronic monitoring system ensures that the two remain synchronized. This helps decrease the stall speed by a few knots and also balance the lift produced by the flaps at the back of the wing. Now in flight, let's watch what happens as we approach a stall. We can see the aircraft begin to pitch down and descend long before the main wing has stalled. In a conventional aircraft, abrupt control movements or a bank angle of even a few degrees in a stalled configuration like this would likely result in a spin. However, in a tandem wing aircraft, we can maintain directional control and roll authority throughout the forward wing stall. To bring the aircraft back to level flight, we don't even have to lower the nose. For demonstrations, we can just add power and the aircraft will begin to climb once more. It seems strange to have a stall warning system at all in an aircraft that in some sense can't stall, but Starship has quite a complex one. The angle of attack indicator on the left of the instrument panel is not meant to be used for any maneuvers, but instead indicates the status of the stall warning system. When the unitless angle of attack exceeds 0.6, a stick shaker will activate to alert the pilot of an impending stall. If the flaps and forward wing are retracted, this will also be accompanied by a column pusher which forces the elevator down until the angle of attack is reduced. If the angle of attack is not decreased in 15 seconds, only then will the dual stall warning horns activate. On the ground, this sequence can be tested by pressing the stall warning test button on the pilot's left subpanel. When landing Starship, be careful to lower the nose gingerly after touchdown. 
Since the forward wing is very near stalling on touchdown, it won't have much lift left to give once you start slowing down. Unlike a conventional airplane, activating reverse thrust or beta once the main gear is on the ground can help gently rotate the nose gear down since the propellers are located behind the center of rotation. Back on the ground, let's take a look at some of the walk-around features. In addition to engine covers and wheel chocks, the most important pre-flight items on this aircraft are the gear downlock pins. These pins prevent the gear from inadvertently retracting when the aircraft is on the ground and the hydraulic landing gear system is depressurized. These pins are stowed in the cockpit storage area so they can always be accounted for from the pilot's seat. If they're not removed before flight, the gear will not retract. The remove before flight streamers on these pins and covers also blow with the wind, which can help you position the aircraft for a cool engine start by facing into the wind. If the pitot-static covers are left on, you can expect false readings on the instrumentation. But leaving the engine covers installed can be catastrophic. When starting the engine's suspiciously low gas generator RPM should be your hint that the covers have been left installed and not to introduce fuel into the engine. Another unique feature of Starship compared to Black Square's other aircraft is brake temperature. The brake temperature can be observed on the cabin visualizer tablet screen. If hot brakes are retracted into the wheel wells immediately after takeoff, you may see the wheel well overheat message on the ICAST display. Similar to other Black Square aircraft, Starship also implements an advanced electrical simulation with voltage drop from large loads. This affects the interior and exterior lighting and also the various fan speeds and other equipment throughout the aircraft. Speaking of lights, this aircraft also has Black Square's exterior lighting and strobe effects that better simulate the disorienting effects of operating in instrument conditions. If you encounter a strong storm, these might not be the only lights you have to worry about though. Electrostatic discharge across the aircraft's windshield can be as disorienting as it is a wonder to behold. Watch for Purple Corona Discharge, also known as St. Elmo's Fire, on the static wicks of the forward wing when flying in the vicinity of a thunderstorm. Saving the best for last, Starship's windshield wiper effects are an improvement on Black Square's Analog King Air, which had some of the only working windshield wipers in Flight Sim 2020. As the placard says, please don't run them on dry glass, though. I hope you're looking forward to experiencing these features and the unique aerodynamics of Black Square's Starship. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.